Hey everybody, it's Yudao Sines from Mimic Method and in this video we're going to talk about a very common problem people have when trying to converse in a foreign language and that's getting stuck in their head. So they struggle to speak and understand because they're in their head, translating, conjugating, confusing things and not in the present moment. Uh, but before we talk about how we can get ourselves out of our head, I want to first announce that we will be taking on new students for coaching and for our group cohort training. I'll put a link in the description. You can go and find out more details. I'll put a page up soon. And that will open up on October 15th, registration, and we'll start training October 20th. And in this video, I'm going to show you behind the scenes of that program to show you how we get people out of their heads using our techniques. But first, let's talk about the problem. Um, if you have had experience trying to converse with people in the language, then you may have had the experience of trying to talk and then trying to translate in your head in real time and getting lost because your translation mind is not fast enough to keep up with natural speed of conversation. And then when it's time for you to speak, you might be stuttering all the time, um, second guessing your words, your word form. Oh, is it, is it a, you know, masculine or feminine? Is it the, do I say come or comes? And all that type of thinking, that's what I'm referring to about getting stuck in your head. It's a very common problem because our academic training has made this a problem for us. If you do a conventional language learning program, they are training you to be in your head. What do I mean by that? Well, think about what this typical learning environment looks like for people. They are sitting down and they're studying, either with a textbook or with a smartphone, you know, and they're sitting here and they're reading things they're analyzing things, and they're doing all this stuff in the inner reaches of their mind while their body is completely still, completely silent, and completely tuned out of the environment. It looks like this. Right? Now compare that scene and what that looks like to what you're trying to actually do out there in the world, which is talking to people. That looks like this. Right? Very different look from this. Yet somehow we think that that is going to somehow lead to this. They're, they're completely different things. When you are in flow conversing with someone, you are in the moment. Your attention is placed on the person, on their movements, on the sounds coming out of them. Whereas when you're studying, your attention is purely in this deep part of your kind of abstract analytical mind. And those are, as far as experiences, they couldn't be even further apart. And the key word here is attention. When we talk about attention, you're taking in all this information at all times through your senses, all those activities happening in your brain, on your body. But your attention is where, in that moment in time, you are focusing, where you're, where you're being aware of what's happening. So we need to train our attention to be where it needs to be in order for us to flow in conversation. And when you do a typical study program, then you are training your attention actively to be out of the physical surrounding. This is what this is. Your attention is not on the people. Whereas when you're talking to someone, your attention should be filtering in through your, primarily through your ears and through your eyes, and you're watching what's happening, and you're hearing what's happening. And your attention needs to be attuned to the native environment that you're trying to flow within. So let's take a look about what I mean by that by taking a look at the course and how we train it. So... When it comes to speech, we're not just concerned about the what's happening in the mouth. That's obviously important. I'll go over that in a different video. But also, what's happening on our face and bodies. Right now, you can get a lot out of what I'm saying, not just by my words, but the gestures I'm making and the facial expressions I'm making. So that's a huge, very often overlooked part of the language learning experience. So in our new curriculum, what you do is first you become aware of the facial anatomy by kind of priming it in the muscles in your own face. That allows you to kind of 
be even more tuned in to the activity happening on other people's faces. So we do that first, we do a couple of drills. Um, and then we do something called shadowing. It's a big feature of our program where we take some aspect of the world and then of the someone speaking to you and then we, we, uh, we shadow it, we kind of follow behind. So you'll watch this video, if you're learning Spanish, for example, of someone speaking Spanish and then you'll mute it or not mute it and pay all your attention to one part, in this case, her upper face. What are her eyebrows and her eyelids doing? So when they go down, I'm shadowing behind her, right? Her eyebrows go up, my eyebrows go up. Her high lids kind of close eyebrow, a little bit, her, my eyelids close a little bit, right? And, you know, you can watch someone talking. Estoy ahí, estoy, estoy en algún lugar, ¿no? Y, bueno, todo sea que me llegue un guión bueno y tenga una nominación a, a los Oscars para mejor so, actor right secundario. Here. And what's happening here is that with the eyebrows, they are kind of highlighting the, they're, they're communicating information while we're speaking in concert with speech. So by me sitting here and I'm passively taking in his Spanish sounds through my ears while attentively regarding his eyebrows here and then shadowing behind. And then we'll kind of notice when his eyebrows perk up, that kind of piques my attention on what he's saying in that moment. So I'm not focused on what's being said. I'm not focused on vocabulary or grammar. I'm just trying to attune my eyes to this part of his face. Then, once we got that going, we can prime our lower face. We kind of go through all the different parts of the face. It's a drill we do where you mimic me as I make, as I kind of like move these different parts of the face so you become aware of it. Um, again, priming your kind of muscular attention. And then you can then again watch Hola, glamour, soy Shakira. someone como speaking. Que, it's como que tienes un hijo try to lo mandas shadow a un intercambio te... speaking. So this seems weird. People are like, oh, well, this is learning a language? How, how is learning a language? What's happening here, people do this. They do this face shadowing. And what's, what's going on is you're training your brain to associate the target language to you paying attention in this way. And then on an unconscious level, you're taking in all this critical information. I like to bring up the example of a child. Think about a child who can't speak yet. They're not sitting here just like completely tuned out the environment and then one day they're speaking words. For those whole several years that before they actually say sentences, they're just watching. You ever see a baby just look at you like this? Right, they're just taking you in and they're just taking in all that information that will eventually one day manifest as them mimicking it and speaking like you. So we need to kind of reenact that process and not just with our face, but with the entire body. So we do the same thing here. We break it up in the curriculum into um, the head and shoulder and to the arm and hands. So again, you're kind of shadowing different people speaking in your target language and um, noticing the little nuances and details. I also go in this video through the kind of really deep nuances of movement patterns, like the different parts of the body, the paths they take, the speed or velocity, you know, little points of stress. Um, when things stop, people stop in their gestures, little waving motions, um, how fast they're going at different rhythms. So these different aspects, you know, you're not trying to master all these things right here. All I'm doing is just pointing out details so you can prime your attention to this infinitely fascinating and complex world of what's happening on people's bodies and faces when they're communicating. And when you tune into that, while you have the native speaker audio coming into your ears at the same time, a lot of things are going on. But first and most important of which is that we're now effectively getting you out of your head. And what it means to be in your head is that the locus of your attention is out of your immediate physical surrounding into an abstract space. That's why you can be so deep in your head that, you know, things can be happening around you that you just don't even notice at all, right? So that's not what you want to be. Again, think about children. You very rarely see a child just sitting here being like in their head. Usually children are in the environment and taking things in. So we want to be like that. That's step one for getting you out of your head. Um, the other aspect then is now taking that to when you're speaking. And then in our program, we have this process called smoothing, where you are smoothing out all the stuttering, all the, all the kind of twitchy movements out of your speech. But one important part of this process, as I break it down, you know, slowing it down, being able to control the speed of your voice, chop 
is what I'm referring to of stuttering and whatnot, then being able to control your body mannerisms, people have lots of different like twitching and tick type things they do when they speak, when they're nervous, when they're overthinking. And we want to still those body parts and silence those extra sound effects as a way to smooth out your speech. And as you once you do that, then you can speed it up and add more animation to it, but it makes a massive difference. And one little tip I'll leave you with here is when we coach people in our one-on-one sessions, we will have them speak very slow. We'll identify what all their little special ticks are, what their chop is. But one thing that everyone needs to do better is control and still their eyes. Very, very subtle, simple, but not as easy as you think. Being able to speak while maintaining your eyes focused on your speaking partner or if it's a Zoom call, just staring at your screen. Because what happens is that when people are thinking, they look up. They say, blah, 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 and um, um, blah, 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 and blah, blah, and, um, um, and this is fine. I do it all the time. It's a natural thing to do. But it becomes very problematic in language learning because what people are trained to do is to try to kind of analytically conjugate and find the right grammar pattern in their head. And what happens is when they do that, they'll say, yo que, que, uh, que, quiere, quiero comer contigo, pero ella no, um, uh, no, no quiere hablar, right? So that whole sequence of you overthinking and overanalyzing things in your head, you probably already had the right answer the first try, but then you second guess yourself and you keep overthinking it. That is a very strong neurological process that is not so simply just a switch off. But what we found in our coaching is that a really simple but highly effective way of kind of short circuiting that system is to focus on stealing your eyes. And my theory for it is that the eyeballs that control your eye, sorry, the muscles that control your eyeball, um, those muscles are right next to your brain and the signal that comes from it will kind of trigger this cascade of neurological information that will trigger this pattern of you going into an overthinking mode. And therefore, it kind of acts as kind of an ignition to that overthinking pattern. So if you're able to stop the ignition, kind of like blow out the, blow out the uh, fuse before it lights and blows up the explosion, then people all of a sudden really quickly get over that problem. So. One tip for you now is to, if you go out in your conversation practice, see if you can just focus on one thing, which is maintaining still eyes while you're speaking. Hi, I am speaking like this. Yo quiero comer, pero ella no quiere comer. So still give myself time to think about it, but you'll find you won't do as much kind of looping in your brain if you focus on keeping your eyes still. All right? So... That's uh, one of the first videos here we have on the mind-body block, as we call it. The, we have five flow blocks that we're talking about. I'm going to make another video talking about the next flow block, which is the ear-mouth block. But if you enjoyed this video, like it, subscribe it. I'll put a link in the description to the page where you can find more information about the upcoming um, flow coaching, flow cohort training program. And if you have any questions, just ask me here in the comments, and I'll try to get back to you. All right, guys. Thanks for watching.